Hey guys, uh, been a while since I made a new video and I got some updates and some new stuff to explain to you, spiritual experiences that I had and they're all spiritual experiences, but some past stuff and some new stuff and let's go. All right. Uh, so one day I was sleeping. You know, my my dad had just died, and I'm sleeping. He just died. I seen him in the spirit world. I made a video about it earlier, and I thought that was it. I thought he said hello, Rich. What's going on? And that was going to be it. Well, it wasn't. I woke up in the middle of the night and as I woke up, I heard the region priest, one of the region priests talking to, talking to my dad, well, someone, I found out later it was my dad, but he was talking to my dad just by, just by his mannerisms, not his mannerisms, but, but what he was saying. This is what he said to the region priest, to my dad, and I overheard the region priest. They thought I was sleeping. I'm sleeping in the spirit world, in the region priest, where they hang out. Their building, whatever, it's a big castle, like, big castle priest place. Full of technology. <laughs> anyway, I'm in there sleeping. They're over there talking, and I overhear the priest talking to my dad, and I hear this. This is this is what I heard. So when he broke through the seventh seal, he could perceive us, and that was pretty much it. We had to take care of him since then. And my dad started talking. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. The Southern Seals. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? What is going on? Southern Seals, Southern Seals. So I got to thinking. I should have asked, but I didn't. I was too busy listening. And I call them skins. The priest calls them seals. Seven seals of the body. When I broke through the seven seal, I could perceive my soul. When my soul broke through the the layers, the skins, the uh, barrier, the skins between spirit world there's a there's a thing that People always say, spiritual people always say this. It drives me nuts. The veil. The veil's getting thin and all the demons are coming through to kill us. No. It's always been the same. How about the veil is your skins? How about the veil is your skins? I don't know. It's just a, just a thought, just a word. The priest said, when I broke through my seven seal, I could perceive from my soul in my mind. That's what I was doing when I woke up, perceiving the priest and my dad talking. Laying, I'm laying in St. Illusion, more or less. St. Illusion, spirit world, astral plane, St. Illusion. It's a big city, 45,000 people, 45 million people. In St. Illusion. Okay. So what's the set of, set of seal? Set of skin? Is there set of skins that make up? I know I broke through my skins. I know that. But I didn't know there were seven of them. And I didn't know they were called seals. Seal you in. Seal you from the perception of your third eye. From your soul. See... I can see through my soul 
my soul I can see through the seals when I broke initially broke through that day ten years ago I was fucking gone <laughs> man you don't believe it so that really woke me up are they the veils are they the veils of spiritual people people when you see the veil when people say the veil they are they talking about i don't know i don't know i'm just i'm just working this out in my head is there something else between this life and the afterlife Because the only thing that's, the only veils are the ones separating your ego from your soul perception. And there are seven of them, as far as I know. Bring your soul to your head and you'll see it. And you do that. You can do that when you're sleeping in dreams. But even in your dreams, you have dream illusion, and you're not seeing, uh, say, say, uh, you're dreaming in St. Illusion. You're seeing St. Illusion. In your University of St. Illusion. You're seeing the University of St. Illusion. You're walking around, there's people in school and everything's going on, and all of a sudden you'll see a car come driving up in the hallway, and a car come driving up, and your friends tell you, get in, come on, let's go, let's go. Game, man. So you hop in and you're driving down and, you, and you automatically you're on a road and you're doing that's a dream illusion. Dreams, Saint Illusion proper, spirit world, Saint Illusion proper. And there's people dreaming in Saint Illusion. Souls are dreaming in Saint Illusion. And they're awake in Saint Illusion. So you got the awake state plus the dream state. You get caught up in your friend's dream. He comes, acknowledges you, but he's dreaming, and you perceive him in your car in the university. Do you understand the difference? So the dreams, when you're dreaming, you could be in St. Lucian, but you're dreaming in St. Lucian. So nothing, the mechanics, the, the, the mechanics of that world are also in dream space. So you're dreaming. The thing to do is wake up in St. Lucian conscious in your head here and conscious as an illusion and perceive it it's totally different you'll totally see the difference there won't be there'll be a damn near 100 percent less dream space less dream space in same illusion that's how you know the difference less dreaming going on but as soon as you check out into dream space You're dreaming in St. Lucian. If you are in St. Lucian. I'm just using St. Lucian as an example. So you can have some orientation in the spirit world. But is that the veil everybody's talking about? The veil, the veil, the veil. They, 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 spiritual people act like the veil is some outside force that's in your walls. It's, it's, it's everywhere. I think there's a veil. But it's not called a veil. I think the veils are in you. And you have to see through them. But there's also... This reality is called the illusion to Jesus Christ. This is a fucking dream. This reality is a dream. This is physical. It's a dream. I don't quite understand that because it hurts like a fuck and you get accused so it ain't that much of a dream but they call it an illusion it's very complicated Tenless, man. anyway I just thought I'd give you that so, seventh seal, I broke through the seventh seal, and I can perceive 
from my soul. I overheard that talking. My dad had just died. He was talking to the priest, one of the region priests, and the region priest was explaining to him what happened to me, how I ended up mentally perceiving them, and all the shit that goes with it. There you go. Later, guys. Hey, guys. Okay. I have another Dana Boone past life experience. It ain't it ain't uh, shooting killing, but it's pretty good. It's a nice nice experience I had. So it turns out like this. Um, I don't know what I was doing. I was laying in my bed trying to fall asleep, and uh, you know we. Would you think about there's a certain state I can get to where you're laying in meditation? Say you're in meditation, but you're not in meditation. I don't know what it is. Weird state. And you just release your ego. You release, no, no, not your ego, your uh, subconscious. And you just release it, release. And I start watching visions. You start having visions from all your garbage, from all your subconscious. Well, I was thinking about Daniel Boone. I go, I thought to myself, I wonder what other visions I can have of Daniel Boone. I, this is the first time I ever did this in a controlled way. I thought that. I thought, wonder what visions I can have. I wouldn't. Just, I wish I could just get Daniel Boone's normal. Life, like normal day to day shit. Because I never get to see that. And it always has to be something dramatic. It always has to be something dramatic for me to have visions. Anyway, as I was thinking that, all of a sudden, I'm on a road. And I have a horse. And I have a horse. There's a horse here to my left of me. And I have a horse. And it's a female horse. It's light. It's a light beige. Beigey colored horse. Light in color. And I'm on a dirt road. To the left of me forward is a house. And it's a newly built house or a store. It's like in the old western, you see the stores or the houses. It was freshly built, cut wood. And in front of it, in front of the, there's a wooden walkway. There's railing where you tie your horses up. And uh, um, in the road, there was mud mud in the middle of the road and I'm standing there but it ain't muddy where I am over there it's muddy but it's not muddy where I am at the side of the house there's at the the side of the house there's empty empty meadow empty space and there was weeds growing and it was early fall I remember the weeds I remember sumac in this life when i was in the vision there was goldenrod and there's sumac and i remember those plants and chicory chicory flowers chicory chicory plants i think sumac alongside the building but it wasn't big it wasn't a big big and goldenrod, some so, some sort of goldenrod. And uh, I remember looking at the plants. And I had the horse. And I'm walking up, and I th- I saw the sumac. And it was, so it was early fall. I knew that by the state of the plants. I had the horse, and I was worried. I have to sell. I'm selling the horse. 
but I love the horse. And my kids loved it. My kids loved the horse. I'm selling it to a, some some guy that I don't know who this guy is, but I'm selling the horse. And all of a sudden, I'm standing there. I just I'm walking up on the road, and the guy he come walking down the road, I guess. And we meet, we meet, and I uh, we meet, and I'm all worried. This guy is crazy, and he's uh, one of them horse beats his horse, beats the hell out of the horse, and treats it, abuses it, abuses the horse. I don't want to sell the horse to the abuser or a fucking crazy guy. So I'm all man manned up for you to say no, forget it, you ain't getting it. You ain't getting my horse. But I gotta sell it. I gotta. For some reason. And my kids love the horse. So I felt bad, but we had to sell it. But the horse was part of the family. And it was a female horse. It's a female horse. The horse was very close to us, and it felt like part of the family. Anyway, I walk up to the guy. I shake his hand. I say, how you doing? He's, he's, he, uh, he puts his hand upside the horse, brushes his head. He's checking out the horse, and we're, and uh, all of a sudden I hear, and I'm looking at the guy and the horse, and all of a sudden I hear, horsey, 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 horsey. This little girl comes running down the, the road, and her mom, with her mom, and this little girl, she's about four or five, horsey, 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 and she's got a little skirt on, not a skirt, a little dress, one of them, uh, uh, Looked like uh, back in the olden days dresses. She's got one of those on, and she's screaming, "Horsey, horsey, horsey, horsey!" She comes running down, and I, my heart just went, and I knew it was going to be all right. It was for his daughter, so I knew he wasn't going to abuse it. And right then, the the little girl and then the horse they get along, and it was beautiful. And I was relieved. I sold the horse and everything was good. That's the past life vision I had. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Worked out pretty good, I thought. And so I knew it was early fall that we were selling the horse. Like, uh, the end of August, September, early September, the end of August, somewhere in there, right top of the goldenrod, the height, the, the color of the flower, gold. Anyway, just thought I'd tell you that. Daniel Boone sold a horse. <laughs> I don't know what town it was in, but it was in uh, Kentucky. I know that. Or that area. Well, I think it was. I don't even know if they have Kentucky. I don't even know if, 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 if they have Goldenrod, Sumac, and Chicory in Kentucky. So, there you go. That's a three. Well, that's another. Another one. Another past life vision I had of Daniel Boone. Later, guys. Uh, this is uh, the nurse from when I had my uh, stroke. That nurse is part two of the nurse. I forgot to tell you guys an event that happened with that nurse, that spiritual, that happened later that night. 
But anyway, I'll walk you through the, what happened real fast. I'll say it again. I'll take you through the steps of what happened. So, this nurse who had a stroke also, it was a stroke center. Fuck, whatever. This nurse had a stroke. She was, she looked like the hunchback of Notre Dame, like really bad. She, her face was bent. Her speech was thingy. Her muscle structure was, she had a big hip that stuck out. And she walked like, that's what she looked like. Literally, literally, she looked like this. So being that size, she was tic tac like, I can't believe she worked eight hours a day with that problem. Blew me away. Blew me away. She was trooper, man. But she was fucking whatever this is. Whatever this is. I don't know. I didn't have good vibes. I woke up 7 o'clock in the morning. The vampire came. Vampire nurse came in. Took three vials of blood out of my arm. Every morning, 7 o'clock, she comes in takes the blood. From that point on, you're miserable as fuck. You wake up in the, you wake up in the morning. You don't want people taking your blood, so you're miserable as fuck. I'm laying there. The nurse comes in and says, "You are having a shower. You are having a shower right now. So get undressed, go in there and have a shower, wash up. I'm taking your clothes and doing the laundry." Uh, I'm like, I'm, saying, I'm, I'm in my underwear and in this, in this, I'm in my underwear and I'm in this gurney thing. We, we tie it up at the back and I have underwear on. So I'm like, so I'm walking, I get out, she leaves the room, she runs outside the room, she does some stuff. I'm walking towards the bathroom. I meet her in the hallway, at the door in the hallway. She's coming back in, and we ran into each other. I said, look, I ain't having no shower. I ain't having no shower. I want my fucking coffee. I ain't having no shower. I didn't swear. But I said, look, I ain't having a shower, so forget about it. She goes, look, buddy, you're having a fucking shower, and that's the final. You're having a shower. Now get in there and have a goddamn shower. She didn't say fuck, but that's, she said, look, buddy, you're having a goddamn shower. And that's it. Now get in there, take off your underwear, and give them to me. Fuck. I'm like, holy fuck. So I go in the bathroom. She turns around. She turns around and goes and gets something. I don't know what the fuck she's doing. Messing with Joe, my, my. Joe is my uh, friend. He's laying there next to me in another bed. But he's fucked up. He's had... He's all fucked up. (laughs) And... uh, So I'm in the bathroom. Make a long story short. I'm in the bathroom. I go... I close the door. I tear up my underwear. And uh, I'm thinking, is she coming back? She's coming back for the underwear right now, right? And I have the door locked. All of a sudden, I locked the door on purpose because I knew she's coming back. And I want to see how she reacted. She went fucking nuts on this door. She's pounding, pounding on the door. You got to open the door. Bang, 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 bang. I, I rate. I rate. Pounding on the door. You got to open the door. We got to monitor you in the shower to make sure you don't fall and hurt yourself. I'm like, well, hold on a minute. Pow, pow, pow. Open the door. She, she didn't even hear me. I couldn't believe it. Other nurses come running. From what I know, from what I understand, other nurses come running. She's screaming at so I take my pants off, and she wants my underwear. She she's gonna wash my underwear, okay, in the washing machine. This is her duty, and I have to have a shower. I'm standing there with my balls hanging up, totally fucking naked. I had the the, the thing off me, so I grab the towel 
and I put it. Oh no, I grabbed that. I grabbed that thing, that gown thing. They you tie up in the back. I put that over my balls, and I cracked the door open. She's looking at my balls. She didn't even look at me, or anything. In my in my in the hand, I opened the door. I had my underwear in a hand, and I opened the door with my underwear in hand. She didn't even look. She looked directly at my balls. But I covered them up, so I had, a, like, a rag over my balls. So I, I I basically took my underwear, and I pushed it right in her face. Like, here's my underwear. You know? She goes, you can't lock the door. It's illegal for you to lock the door. We have to monitor you. And I go, Fuck you, lady. I'm locking the door. She goes, you are not locking the door. And I'm like, I had two showers yesterday. Two showers yesterday by myself. And the door was locked. What are you going to do? Are you going to call the police? Come on. Give me a fucking break. She she got all bent out of shape at that. When I told her that. So, yeah, I know. I know. You're full of shit, and I know you just want to see my balls because you're fucking ugly, and you want to see my ball. That's what gets you off. This is what you do. This is what you do, and I, I'm proving it right now to myself. I can't prove this to anybody else in the fucking world, but I know. I know this is what you do. This is what you do to all your patients, you fucking bitch. Then... As she's standing there in the doorway, the doorway is cracked open. I'm standing there, and she's still staring at my balls. I got my underwear in her face. I told her about the uh, two-shower thing yesterday, and I locked the door for like 20 minutes. So I busted her ass right in her face. I busted her ass. You're full of shit, lady. I've been here for a week and a half. I've had a hundred fucking showers, and the door was locked every fucking time. So you're full of shit. Then another nurse comes. Another nurse. And they're like twins. They're fat, and they look fat and plump and homely looking. Look really homely. They were like twins. One was smaller and one was bigger. And they look homely, like, I don't know, homely. What do you say? I don't know. But anyway, they came, one girl, I'm here, da 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 she, she She pushes the, 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 the wonders out of the way in the door and opens it up more. And they're both standing there. She goes, I'm here to do your blood pressure. Give me your arm. And I'm standing there. I'm not even holding the door anymore, but I'm holding my bag. I got my clothes, I got my gown over my balls. I'm still holding it, and I'll give out my arm. Now, you're supposed to take blood pressure when you're calm, right? So you get an accurate reading. Calm down. My heart is fucking pounding like a racehorse. Like I'm being mugged. Nude. It's fuck. So... She's taking my blood pressure. Then another nurse comes, and uh, she wants to make sure I got towels or something. Something stupid towels that I need for a shower. I'm sitting there, yeah, I got my towels. So when do, when do you give uh, people in the shower a fucking uh, arm thing? What, what, what do they call that? Fuck, I can't remember I just said it for crazy sakes. Blood pressure, yeah. So when do you uh, blood pressure? So the chick's taking my blood pressure. I said something to the effect. Since when do you take blood pressure, people's blood pressure when they're standing in a shower? More or less. They don't. It's a fucking lie. They were there also. They were... Those two girls that came after the hunchback were in on the scheme of seeing me naked. And they came with her. They followed her around. 
She was like the leader of this fucking cult. I don't know. You can call it a cult. I didn't think it really was, but they were all in on it. And this is what they did to the guys. And they all came to get you. They all came to see me naked. Well, they didn't. Well, they did, but they didn't see my balls. Anyway, I couldn't fucking believe it. I, I said to I said to the nurse taking my blood pressure, and the other nurse that came, I said, "Boy, I never had so much nurse's attention as when I'm standing here naked in the shower." And they all got fucking, they all freaked out like, "Well, yeah." I, they came up with an excuse. I forgot what it was. They said. I go, Sh-. basically, I go, yeah, I know what's going on, you fuckers. Fuck. Anyway, put that aside. And I thought about that all day, like, off and on all day. And I watched those three throughout the day hanging around each other, talking in the in the nurses' quarters and going from room to room and they're all following each other. They all did the same thing with each other. And I'm thinking, fuck, right? Fuck. I told Jesus, I told Christ, I got her name, the lunchback. He told me later that night, I asked him, I go, would you get anything on the nurse? Boat. He goes, yeah. He goes, if you were unconscious laying in the bed, they usually take pictures of you and they share it and they share the pictures. And uh, something else, I forgot what it was. I had it in the other video, the last video. So I couldn't believe it. This is what they do. And I knew it. I knew it. I knew it was in there. I knew it. But that night, three o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the night, three o'clock in the morning, and uh, I'm going to bed. I'm going to bed that night around 11, 11 at night. And I'm thinking, fuck, that nurse is going to sneak in here. And I think she, she stayed. She slept in the hospital. She didn't go home, this nurse, the hunchback. She slept in the hospital. Because she was always there. 24-7, she was there for days. Anyway, I was thinking, fuck, she's going to come in my bedroom tonight. She's going to do something to me. I'm sleeping. I don't be able to do it. Now, I had an extra blanket because they give you a a sheet, and I was freezing. It was the height of a blizzard outside, the blizzard. And it was fucking cold in my room. So I got uh, two more blankets to cover my ass up, or one more blanket to cover my ass up when I'm sleeping at night. So I I put this other blanket on my bed. And uh, I don't know if this was real or what happened. I'm laying there. I'm sleeping. I wake up in the middle of the night. The door opens up. Light comes in. Light from the hallway. Because me and Joe, we like to black, pitch black in our, and quiet in our room. The door opened up. The hunchback walked in. She had she had changed her clothes. It was gray. She had gray on. I guess, yeah. Spiritually, I could see her. I didn't open my eyes at all. I was even looking. But I could see her. It's sort of like St. Lucian. When you're in St. Lucian and you see. But I'm seeing in this world, spiritually. I'm seeing, this is what I saw. She walked in, right up to my bed. And she started, she opened up the cupboard. She started going through my shit. Looking. There was nothing in the cupboard. She looked in. Then she turned around and she grabbed a blanket on my bed. And she slowly pulled it off my bed. Okay. And I felt it. 
go out to felt it come down my legs, felt it come off of my legs as she pulled it off me. Then she turned around with the blanket and walked out. Now, out in the hallway, they got a thousand fucking blankets. Thousands. They got a fucking room full of blankets. Heated blankets. I could ask for one. I could ask for ten. Can I have a heated blanket? And they'll come and give it to you. And it covers you up. And it's nice and warm. And it's dryer blankets. They have that. She comes in and steals the blanket. I didn't see. I saw her take him. I saw she had gray. She had gray clothes on. Bodysuit. Gray bodysuit. In the morning, I woke up. And I thought, fuck. I looked for the blanket, and it was gone. The extra blanket I put on my bed, and I go, fuck, that really happened. She came in here. I thought it was a dream or a ghost. I thought it was a ghost. She was a ghost. She she was asked for traveling, coming in and taking my blanket, but the blanket's gone. And so I got up. I went out in the hallway, and she was down the hallway working, and she had a gray bodysuit on like a gray top and gray pants. And I went, fuck, exactly like I saw her. Then, and then and my sheet was gone. My sheet was gone. So I'm thinking she took it. But did it really happen? I can't confirm that it really happened because I didn't even open my eyes. But I saw, spiritually, I saw it, her come in and take the blanket off me. Though I asked the nurse, I go, does it, is it, I told her, I asked another nurse, what are the, uh, what do you guys come in in the middle of the night and take a blanket off your bed, off my bed? Why would you do that? And they said, we wouldn't. We could give a fuck of a blanket. We got 100 million blankets. Well, I'm going, well, that's what happened. And she goes, I don't know. I can't explain it. Well, I fucking can. Okay. Uh, I'll give you an example. I'm sleeping in my bed. Second floor on the house, in the house. I'll look out. I'll be sleeping in my bed. I'll look out the the wall of my house, where my bed is against the wall. I'll look outside and see someone walking. Someone's walking on our property, cutting through the yard. That's me, astral traveling, looking out through the wall at the person walking through the yard. I do that all the time. That's what I did with the girl, the hunchback, who came in and stole my blanket. Why would you steal the blanket? Why would that? I'm thinking she was also traveling, stealing a blanket. But the blanket was gone. So I don't understand. Either it really happened. She re- she actually came in, pulled the blanket off my legs, and walked out with it. I think she came in for more. I think she came in. I don't fucking know. I don't have a clue. But that's what happened. I can't, find, I can't reason why she would steal the blanket off my legs. Why she would go in the, in the dresser, like a big tall dresser with shelves, shelving dresser thing. Why she would go in there and look through my shit. I didn't have nothing in there. I didn't come in the hospital with nothing. So, I don't know. But, either she came in spiritually, in my room, 
pulled the blanket off spiritually and left, and I saw it. Or she came in physically, physically, pulled the blanket off me, and left, and I saw it in the astral. Because I never opened my eyes at all, but I saw it. And the blanket was gone. So what happened there? One or the other happened. Anyway, that's another little thing I had to tell you about. I forgot to tell you about in the last video. Later, guys. Oh, <laughs> shit.